some of them are so upset and so worried about their futures that they're thinking about not even having children because they don't want to bring them into a world that's full of pollution. The good news is no one was hurt. So I talked to one of the guys who was in this pool at the time, and he told me how he and another swimmer rushed to get the driver out of the car before it began to sink. Are you a Seahawks fan? Are you an NFL fan? What do you uh, think about the Seahawks? I am not a Seahawks fan. <laughs> I am what? a Russell Wilson fan. You're going to have to leave the show. <laughs> don't hate me. Don't hate me. Five people actually hurt in this accident. There are dozens of people standing outside. Of course, they've been evacuated. There's also a bunch of onlookers. So if you're wondering how your pizza will get to you still warm and in one piece, here's your answer. This insulated hot bag. And I have a truck and I couldn't get through. Yeah, it was I mean, just too crazy. icy. It was insane. You drive yeah. a truck? I have a truck. Like I'm a, a dually? Like, like a dually? No, it's just a trailblazer, but I like it. <laughs> That's I like right. trucks. Well, and they also want to let everybody else know that they're not just fighting for salary, they're fighting for better services for the students in the district. Police say shots rang out right here in this area, and then a short time later, this white car crashed into a tree. Someone was renting a, a shack in their backyard for a thousand dollars. It was really? a shack. It's like yeah. one of those little tiny yeah. shacks. Mean like it was like a she shed. It was a she shed. Where you keep your lawnmower? It right. literally looked like that. La Monica, great to see you. Give us a sense of the scope of the protest you're covering, and uh, is it like anything you've seen before? Uh, yeah, it, you know, we're pretty well known for our protest here in Seattle. So this one is just as well attended as you would expect. There are thousands of kids here. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but Seattle public schools did not excuse these students, but they showed up anyway. Even some of the teachers are here. Parents are here. Kids of all ages are here. And they tell me that they are just fighting for their future. You know, one of the organizers, one of the student organizers that I talked to, she told me that kids her age, 16, and 17 have climate anxiety. That's what they're calling it, climate anxiety. And some of them are so upset and so worried about their futures that they're thinking about not even having children because they don't want to bring them into a world that's full of pollution where we have these major hurricanes every year. So they're really just here to let everybody know that they want their, voice, their voices heard even though they're not old enough to vote just yet. Wow, we see the we see the signage behind you. We hear the chants, so La Monica. Hear the we sure we sure can. Yeah. Tell us, are they demanding anything specific? Are the protesters there in Seattle calling for any specific concrete action? You know, Seattle has its own version of the new Green Deal. So what they'd like to see is climate pollution uh, eliminated or decreased by the year 2030. And they want to create thousands of green jobs. They believe that this is the, the way of the future and these jobs will be necessary. They want people to start getting trained for, for them right now. So, yeah, they're asking for the same things that everyone around the world is asking for. Uh, but particularly here in Seattle, uh, they want to eliminate climate pollution. All right, LaMonica Peters, thanks so much for your reporting. Great to have you in the show. Yeah, you know, this kind of thing just doesn't happen every day, and most people would have no idea what to do if a car came crashing through the window. But Noah Schlenk told us that he relied on his instincts when a car came crashing through this window and the car landed in the pool. Imagine that you're taking your morning swim at the local gym and then this happens. And this thing came crashing in oh, on the left side of me. <laughs> I thought somebody had thrown a deck chair in. Noah Schlenk, who says he also works as a lifeguard, was in the pool with two other people at the time. Like my first instinct was, oh my God, there was someone in that lane. And then I like make sure that person's like not under the car. Thankfully, no one was under the car. So he and another swimmer moved quickly to help the driver who was still sitting inside. So we opened the door and we're like, hey, you got to get out. You got to get out. And um, he just kind of looked at us and didn't like he still just wasn't all quite understanding like where he was. And then so we. Uh, so the guy I was with actually came in and he reached over and grabbed him and pulled him out. After everybody was safely out of the water, two drivers from Dick's Towing showed up and actually had to get in the pool to figure out how to secure the car. 
It took them about 30 minutes to hook up the tow truck cables to the car, get it out of the pool, and back through the window. I've never done anything like this, but I've done, I've been in situations just as bad as this one. LA Fitness closed its doors temporarily as the car was pulled from the water, but reopened the rest of the gym later this afternoon. A spokesperson says they'll investigate the incident and make sure the pool area is safe before allowing it to be used again. Now, earlier we talked to a few gym members who say although it was somewhat inconvenient for them not to be able to work out, they're just happy that everybody got out safely. Now, as for the hero, he told me he's never experienced anything like this when he's been in the pool, but he's glad he was able to help out. In North Seattle, LaMonica Peters, Como News. We talked to one of the organizers of this rally, and he told us that they're here for two reasons. One, they want to let members know where they are in the negotiations, and they also want to let everybody else know that they're not just fighting for salary, they're fighting for better services for the students in the district. I'm going to step back so you can see what's going on here. Now, right now, people are gathering. They're here to encourage each other, and they're also finding out where Seattle Education Association is in the in the negotiations and what other issues still need to be resolved before they can come to an agreement. SEA says not only do they want competitive salaries, but they want racial equity training for teachers in all of the schools. They want more counselors and nurses to help support students. Now, the district is saying that they'd like for teachers to have those things, but they also have to watch their bottom line and know that they can afford to pay for it. Now, coming up at 6, we'll hear from teachers um, uh, and the district, and they'll tell us why they think that salary increases not only benefits them, but it also benefits students and the district. In Seattle, LaMonica Peters, Como News. It devastated the whole family because now we're um, in that group of family who lost um, loved ones to the, to violence. Daquan McHadden's family is still looking for answers after the 32-year-old was shot to death outside of Seattle nightclub Amber in the early morning hours of July 7th. Unfortunately, my son was shot by being just a bystander, by being in the area when this guy fired off these two rounds. And both rounds, one hit my son in the wrist, the other hit him in the shoulder area. Robert says Daquan was his only child and that he also lost Daquan's mother to breast cancer back in 2009. He says his son was a veteran serving 11 years in the Air Force and he was an entrepreneur who'd recently opened up a laundromat in Tacoma. I've had even one person tell me who uh, was a, a patron at his business saying Daquan was one of the nicest individuals. It was time she didn't have money to wash her clothes and he allowed her to wash her, her clothes free of charge, even gave her the detergent. So I never heard a bad word spoken about my son. The McHadden family says police told them they have some leads, but with several witnesses standing outside of the club, they say someone had to see what happened that night. Every time I think about it, I get angry, but it goes from, go from being sad to mad to sad to mad. But I, I want this guy arrested. I don't even know what taking him so long. Police say they are still investigating McHadden's death, but they wouldn't give Como News any more information about the case. In Seattle, LaMonica Peters, Como News. Burian Mayor Jimmy Mata says he never expected to be physically attacked back in July 2018 while he was enjoying Burian's block party. The state attorney general's office has charged 63-year-old Craig Pierce Tweeney of Oregon with malicious harassment and fourth-degree assault. Mata says Tweeney shouted racist sentiments about his policies during the assault. You know, when you run for office, you can't make everybody happy. Um, you set your policies. You... Uh, we talk about your vision, uh, we talk about your values, and there's some people that are just not going to like it just because they just don't like it, which is okay. Racial tensions in Burien have been running high for the last few years. In January, a racially divisive letter was also passed out to Burien businesses and homes. So what do you think the tone of the city is right now? Uh, it's not where it should be, that's for sure. Really? Yeah. Explain, please. I, I just, well, I think uh, we're seeing more and more racist acts and, you know, people doing things that shouldn't be doing. 
After Mata's attack, new legislation passed in Washington state calling for harsher penalties for hate crimes. The Latino Civic Alliance and Seattle's Jewish Federation worked on the law with Representative Javier Valdez, who released this statement. The new law makes very clear these kinds of attacks should be called what they are, a hate crime. Mata says he plans to continue working and bringing the city together. As for Tweeney, he's facing up to five years in jail and or a $10,000 fine. But I'm not going to let fear uh, stop me from uh, speaking out. Uh, I'm not going to have fear uh, stop me from pushing my values. In Burien, LaMonica Peters, Como News. Oh my God, I've got to get out of here. I've got to move. Vonda Sargent says she had just walked out from her office on First Avenue and turned the corner on Yesler when she heard a loud boom. When she looked up, she said she saw the dump truck speeding towards her, so she ran across the street. The, thing, the dump truck did not slow down. It went straight into the subway, and the only thing that stopped it was the wall in the subway. And you could see the dump truck hit the wall and bounce back, and it was still completely in the subway. When it went through the windows, the ladies upstairs were like, uh, the office buildings were like, what, what's going on? I'm like, get out, get out. Just after 9.30 Monday morning, Seattle police say the dump truck may have suffered a mechanical malfunction. And as the truck sped down James Street, a pedestrian was hit near 2nd Avenue. Three other cars were also struck just before the dump truck crashed into the subway where another person was injured. We immediately got fire down here, got the pedestrian taken up to Harborview Medical Center where they're in serious condition. Uh, the other vehicles had drivers inside of them. Those people were taken to Harborview Medical Center with what was initially believed to be minor injuries. Seattle Fire confirmed that four people are now in serious condition, but all are expected to survive. The dump truck driver suffered minor injuries, but was interviewed by Seattle police to help them figure out just how this accident happened. In Seattle, LaMonica Peters, Como News. Jaime Mendez, who works with our Como team at KUNS, says he was standing at this bus stop on 5th and Olive when he noticed that there was traffic backed up in this bus lane. So he whipped out his cell phone and he decided to shoot some video. The next thing you know, he sees a woman jump into traffic to try and clear the bus lane. Jaime Mendez, an anchor and reporter who works with our Como team at KUNS, says he was standing at the bus stop and noticed how backed up the traffic was near 5th and Olive. So he whipped out his cell phone to shoot some video. The next thing he sees is a woman jumping out into traffic to help clear up the bus lane. My first reaction is I can't believe this is happening just when I'm recording this because you don't, you know, it's a pure coincidence that I just decided to pull out my phone and start recording and then she just jumped in there. Mendez says although he wouldn't have done what Aaron did, he understands why she did it. I took the bus too. I see these things every day, people violating the, the rules. There is not police, there is nobody there to really direct traffic. The video Mendez shot of Aaron's frustration with the traffic has been viewed over six million times and thousands of people have commented on the incident. Some people seemed to understand her frustration, while others thought it was too dangerous and not her place to get involved. We like to say that bus lanes are for buses. That means they are for buses, they're not for cars, they're not for motorcycles, and they're certainly not for people who are frustrated with cars in the bus lane. So leave traffic enforcement to the professionals. Inspired by Mendez's video, more people showed up to Fifth and Olive on Monday to wave drivers away from the bus lane. Whitcomb believes traffic cameras would help police catch drivers who use the lanes illegally. But the budget for the cameras has yet to be approved by the legislature. Anyone who's frustrated with people in the bus lane doing impromptu traffic control or people who are frustrated by violators in the bus lane, we want to make sure that you channel that frustration by letting the legislature know that you support automated enforcement. Wickham says a lot of the bus lane violations happen in downtown Seattle, but it could happen just about any place where there's heavy traffic. Now coming up at six, we'll tell you what Seattle police say drivers can do to help reduce the number of bus lane violations throughout the city. In Seattle, LaMonica Peters, Como News.